morning everybody another day is here wednesday hump day got the truck running over here gotta go hook up the trailer 547r take it to too long have to wipe down this truck too it got a little dirty yesterday with the trip to kenora didn't have a chance to wipe it down when i got back because we got back so late i believe this will be 547r right here there it is, yep, that's her. Hello, old friend. You're coming to Toulon with me today. Quickly hook up here, do our pre-trip. Oh man, this back window's dirty again too. I have to take care of that. Somebody dropped it too high again. Uh, I gotta go down there and lower it down a bit. Some people have higher fifth wheels. Now, we're all supposed to be around about the same height. But it's just a little bit too high for my fifth wheel. I gotta crank it down just a bit. lower. Now it'll hook in just perfect. That's how it's supposed to hook up. There we go. You see in here, locked in. All right. Let's get her ready. So I don't think today is going to be as long of a day as yesterday. <laughs> As far as I know, I just have this Toulon on the agenda for today. So it'll be a little bit of a shorter day to make up for the longer day yesterday. I got a whole bunch of work to get done at home. Got a whole bunch of videos to get to, to get them edited. Got to start getting the house ready for winter. Got to start with the Christmas decorations soon. <laughs> I know I triggered a bunch of you there. <laughs> No, no lights are going up. I mean, no lights are going on until after Remembrance Day. But I want to get them up before the weather gets too cold. So I put them up, test them out, make sure they're working. But uh, the official lighting and when you turn them on is after Remembrance Day. That's for us in our house anyway. You gotta remember, because I hear this every year in my comment section, but it's not even Thanksgiving yet. You have to remember, I'm not American. I'm not an American. American Thanksgiving's in November. That means nothing to me. I'm happy for you guys, but our, our Thanksgiving is in October. It's already done. I know I'm gonna get comments like that anyways. But it's not even Thanksgiving yet. Every year. <laughs> I think because I... I generally look and sound like an American. People just assume I'm an American. I'm not, I'm not American. Canadian. We're different. Whole different country. Different government setup. We're a constitutional monarchy. They're a constitutional republic. We're friends. Don't get it, don't get me wrong, we're friends. We're like two brothers that moved out of the house. Or we'll, we're like two brothers living side by side. A little bit of different histories, different traditions. But for the most part, you can tell we're from the same family. I mean, almost all of our holidays, they all line up with each other. We all celebrate Christmas. We do celebrate Thanksgiving, except we do ours at a different time. You know, Remembrance Day is the same as Veterans Day in the US. Uh, we all shut down for Easter. Uh, we celebrate uh, Halloween, just like the States does, New Year's on the same day. We speak the same language. Unless you go to Quebec, then they speak French, but... You go down to Louisiana, there's a lot of French history there as well, so we share that. 
as well. We share a lot of stuff with our American brothers, but we're not American. We're different. Let's get to work. Roll some smoke out here on the highway. There you go. Let everybody know I'm on the road. Tell me I'm not the only one. Alright, I'm gonna get the jacket on, got a little bit chilly outside. Okay, okay, alright, alright. I know this jacket's super big on me, I just, I'm like swimming in it. But that's better than being too small. At least this way, it's almost like a robe. You know, it blocks the wind from going right up my back. Think of these things. Uh -huh. Oh, there we go. All right. Eat or die. Let me turn this off. Let the government know what I'm doing. The nosy government. Okay. And I'm six minutes early. I got out of the truck backwards again. Oh well. As long as you don't fall down, right? That's the main goal. You don't want to fall out of the truck. So I think there should be enough room up there to get loaded up here. If it's not, I can always roll up this back flap in the back and then roll the whole thing to the front if I need to. This one slides a little bit harder. It's, it's got a different wheel system on it as well than our other roll tights. So this one, uh, I can see that there's more moving parts. There's one, two, three, four wheels per section on each side, whereas on the other ones, there's only two. Ah, I'll get her all greased up. 
That's good for the next driver. Tire down real quick. Like this, and usually if you were just on a flatbed, like an open deck, you would go and pin this behind here like that. But since the cover is going to roll over this, you can just leave that there, and it's not going anywhere. And I come to the back here. I pull them all forward one section at a time. There we go. Now we should be able to get this to come on. There we go. See? Ah, it's a stubborn one. 547R. Stubborn. See? On these ones, this comes out. And this piece has to hook onto that all the way to the top too, right? This one always likes to give us a little bit of trouble, but a little bit of effort. And you can get it on there. Oh, oh, there. Oh, so close. So I figured out what the problem is. If you're having trouble with these trailers, getting it tight and closing it up front here, go to the back and push the back forward. I'll show you in a second here. Sometimes you have to hit it with your, uh, with your snipe bar. You see how these rollers are that far away from here? If they're right against here, it's not gonna close and sometimes it's stuck. You sort of gotta whack it here or push it forward give that little bit of a gap it moves the whole thing forward just enough for it to be nice and tight at the front I know that may not make sense to all of you but if you use these trailers you'll know exactly what I'm talking about so I've heard of some people having some difficulty closing these up at the front that's what that problem is and that's how you fix it there's always a solution the driver who took this trailer out last and brought it back before i used it now was telling me that it's so hard to lock it in in the front you almost have to use your whole body weight sometimes two people's body weight and i was like oh that can't be it's not supposed to be like that so i took a look at it here now because i was having the same problem and the answer to that problem is the way the back locks in it needs to be like i like i showed you there about two inches off the back on the rollers but it's still locked in inside the tarp is just long enough to make it tight at that point. But if it's stuck or jammed right at the back, right against those bolts at the back, it's not gonna be long enough to stretch it all the way out to the front and for you to lock it in at the front. So on the passenger side, I was able to just give it a push with my hands and push it forward. On the left side, it was kind of jammed in and that's why I was having a problem on this side. You just have to give it a good whack with your snipe bar or the crowbar push it forward until the locks kick in just about like two inches forward like that came to the front had no problems locking it up whatsoever i hope that makes sense maybe i'll go more in depth into that if you guys would like me to to explain it a little bit better but we're all loaded up this freight is headed to san antonio texas or at least uh one of them is right, let's get rid of this put that over there it's always such chaos in here in the winter time because uh, there's no storage. But we make do. We make do. Okay, so. so the first delivery is in, uh, oh, Killeen, Texas. The next one's in San Antonio, Texas. And then the next one goes to Leander, Texas. And then Austin, Texas. So whoever's grabbing this load from me, 
they're headed down to Texas, the Lone Star State. It's been a while since I've been there. I'd love to go and see them again sometime. How you guys doing down there? Or sorry, how y'all doing down there? How's Texas treating you today? You got some freight from Trucker Josh headed your way. Watch out. Okay, so I'm back in the yard, dropping this trailer in the loaded lineup, and I've got a bit of a problem. I want to see if you can figure it out without me telling you. I'm just gonna show you my gauges here. They may be a little dusty. Excuse me, I haven't dusted them, dusted them today yet, but tell me if you see anything wrong in any of these gauges, okay? Here's my air gauge, secondary, primary air, fuel, speedometer, RPM, oil pressure, coolant temperature, and battery. Now do you see anything wrong? Okay. There's something wrong in this gauge cluster. These are all doing all right. Here you got your pyro temperature, you got your front axle diff temperature, brake application, suspension load, rear axle temperature, air filter, okay? Somewhere in here. You can see it from here, okay? I'm idling, remember that. I'll give you a, a giveaway hint here, okay? The alternator is spinning because the truck is idling. Did you notice this? I'm at about 10 volts with the truck idling in the red. I double checked to make sure the belt wasn't broken. So the, the, the alternator is spinning, but my batteries are not getting power. That should be at about 14 while the truck is idling. And when you shut the truck off, it should sit around 12 volts. We're sitting at 10 with the truck idling. So that's a problem. That means the alternator is kaput. The alternator has kicked the bucket. Sayonara, see you later. At least that is what my unprofessional diagnosis would be. The professional mechanics have got to go and look at it now and figure out what's going on. Most likely it's going to be the alternator that's bad, but if we're lucky, it might just be a wire that came loose somewhere and the charge isn't getting through to the batteries. My batteries aren't charging for some reason. Maybe the batteries are shot, but I'm thinking it's the alternator. I'll leave that to the professionals to decide. I'm a professional driver. I know how to drive a truck. I can back it in anywhere you need it. I can get your freight secured and down the road and to, de to the destination safely and on time. But when the truck breaks, I can give my opinion on what it is, but uh, we'll have to wait and see. So I can't shut this truck off right now because if I shut it off now, I won't be able to start it. You need at least 10 and a half to 11 volts to get the truck running, maybe 10. But where it's at right now, if I shut the truck off right now, there wouldn't be enough power in the batteries to turn the engine over again. And I'd be stuck here under this trailer and they'd have to drag me out. So what I've done is I've gone and talked to the shop, told them what's going on. Uh, they're gonna get it in as soon as possible. They're gonna try to get it in tonight yet, but they may not have time. It may have to go in tomorrow or whenever. So I've got a different truck that I'm going to be using tomorrow in that case. Uh, this truck is just gonna go be parked in the back in my regular spot by the tire shop and they can boost it to get it going they said or they can tow it into the shop if they have to i just i can't leave it out here in the middle of the lot because it'll be in the way of everybody and there's no room in the shop right now so uh that's where they told me to leave it that'll be their problem to get it into the shop and uh figure out what's going on with it so tomorrow it looks like we'll be in unit 3068 which is a volvo just like the one i used to drive I'm pretty sure anyways, I gotta go hunt down where it is. And if we do have to use that truck tomorrow, I'm gonna have to come in and get all my equipment moved over onto that truck. Uh, get the chains and my straps and you know, snipe bar and everything all moved into that truck on that headache rack. 
but that'll be a headache for tomorrow. Hopefully, let's cross our fingers and hope that they can get this truck in tonight yet and get it fixed before tomorrow morning, because I've got to leave here at like 8 a.m. So I'll be here at 6.30, and uh, then I'll have enough time to get all the equipment moved over, get moved into the, the new truck, and uh, well, the shop is pretty busy right now, so whenever they get to this truck, they'll get to it. So that's my story for you. I gotta get this truck parked now. I cannot shut it off, I can't stall it. I gotta get it back there. Sure is a beautiful day out. It's supposed to get really nice this weekend yet, plus 13. Better enjoy it because winter is coming. It's coming quick. So I got 3068 all ready for me tomorrow. Uh, hopefully I won't have to use it, but I got it ready anyways. I'm gonna have to transfer over my equipment, possibly. I won't need it first thing in the morning. I, I gotta go to Arburg, and for that pickup, I'm not going to need all my equipment. So it all depends. Like if they can get my truck fixed tomorrow during the day, maybe I can be back in it by tomorrow afternoon, and I won't have to move over all my chains. I, I really want to avoid moving all my equipment over to a new truck if I don't have to. It's it's a lot of work just for it to go right back onto my truck. We'll see what happens. I'll go up to Arburg tomorrow. I just need a few straps for that load. We'll tie her down and uh, see what happens when we come back. Yeah, that truck was definitely, it was at nine volts when I parked it and would not turn over. So I'm very glad I realized it when I did. Otherwise we'd uh, <laughs> be stranded somewhere out there between here and Toulon. So uh, I avoided getting, getting stranded. You know, if I wouldn't have been in that situation a couple of times before in my career, uh, I probably probably would have gotten myself stranded. But I recognized the signs, the warning signs, and I, I was looking at my gauges constantly. And I saw that my battery wasn't where it should be. So I kept it running till I got back. And now it's right there for the shop. They don't have to get a tow truck or anything. Guys, guys, did you watch our latest weasel vlog? It wasn't a weasel vlog. He always calls it his. Well, it may as well have been I am the star. That's what you think. Hi, guys. Uh, hi. I'm very excited to see you and to tell you we have a vlog number two. It was a Chevy vlog. It was a weasel vlog. Dad said it was a Chevy right there. Diesel. We did call it a Chevy vlog, but it was a family vlog, okay? These vlogs aren't just yours, or yours, or mine. They're everyone's, they're all of ours. That's very nice. I guess that's a better way of looking at it. I should probably try to be less self-absorbed. Maybe, just a little. Maybe you guys can go check it out. It's called The Big Outside. Dad took us to our big outside. And I made a video. Well, we, we, we made a video. Dad helped. And we will help. And my brothers out there, they helped too. It was fun. Maybe we'll do another one. It was quite this new event. We were very excited. I'm kind of tired of that. Can we do this later? I need a weasel nap. So I hope you guys saw it. And if you did, uh, let us know if you liked it. Okay. Uh, this... That's it, Chevy, uh, Chevy O. That's all. So yeah, we started doing a second show, uh, just an offshoot of this channel, uh, centered around the dog side of things and life from their perspective. I'm calling them dog vlogs. We have two of them out already, if you guys are into that. Maybe your kids will like it, maybe you'll like it, maybe everyone will like it. Don't forget to go check it out on my channel there. Uh, I've got a separate playlist of just the dog vlogs. There's two there. We'll probably do another one. I'm not too sure uh, when. I'll try to get them to you on the weekends, maybe some during the week. But I have a lot of fun making them. It's <laughs> when you spend so much time, with them, especially Diesel, you spend so much time with them, you just sort of connect on a on a brain to brain level. What's that called? Telepathic. I always forget what that word is. Connect on a telepathic level. Well, we had a good day today, though. We've had a good week. I'm finishing this up here on the weekend. I hope you guys are having a great weekend. I guess you're watching this on Wednesday. So, hey, hump day. Two more days to the weekend for you. And if you don't get a weekend because you're on the highway, 
thank you for what you do. We value you. And uh, what would this world be without truckers, right? It would be a whole lot of nothing, really. But how would we get our stuff, right? We like to remind everybody, we're very important people. Excuse me. Truck drivers, what would you do without us? What would we do without doctors, right? And nurses. What would we do without electricians? I wouldn't be making these videos without electricians. What would we do without the people who manufacture and refine the diesel fuel that I burn? Well, I couldn't do much trucking without them. You know? What about the people who make the tires on my truck? It's very hard to go trucking without tires. They're important too. What about all the people making the food? All the farmers out there, all the people along the, the line of the, the, the food from the farm to our table? Making the food, cooking the food, packaging the food, shipping out the food. And what would we what would we do without without them? You know? This whole world is filled with a big chain that we call the economy, and every link of that chain is important. Because the chain is only as strong as its weakest link. That's what they tell me anyway. So, truckers, we are one part of that. But whatever you do for a job is just as important. Because if you make or manufacture goods, that gives me something to haul. What would I haul if nobody made anything? You don't make stuff, you don't have stuff. And then, all of you out there with the money <laughs> that buy our stuff. Thank you, you're the most important because... What would we do if no one bought our stuff? Yeah, I'd have something to haul for a little while, but then it would just sit on the shelf and no one would buy it, and then I wouldn't have a job either. So you get my point. The people that manufacture these TVs and computers out on the other side of the world, what would we do without our computers and microchips? And there's a big shortage of chips around the world right now. I believe that's from the main factory in Taiwan. Or uh, there's a new one that's being built in Arizona, which will be very nice once that's completed, because then we'll have a chip manufacturer on this side of the world as well, so that we're not so heavily reliant on one area on the other side of the world. And uh, there's a whole bunch of uh, geopolitical issues in that area of the world, too, that, you know, when you have a product that is so vital to 21st century society, like microchips, we use them in cars, we use them in computers, we use them in our military equipment, we use them in our in our thermostats, I'm sure. Everything has a microchip in it nowadays. I'm using products right now that are made out there in this little GoPro. It's very important, and it's very important to diversify that. So I, I get what we're... We're in a crisis right now in the world. Everything is short. It, it freaks me out. We're going through big shortages, uh, parts. It's not just microchips, there's parts. Uh, we're short on parts. Have you guys seen dealerships, like car dealerships lately? Where they used to, like, in town here, they used to have hundreds of cars or 100 cars or so in their dealership. They have, like, 10 there now. That is freaking me out, okay? That's freaking me out, especially with all this talk about, you know, the governments that they want to stop selling combustion engines. It sort of gives you a taste of what life will be like, you know, when there are no cars to buy. Like, are we going to be able to buy a car in a couple of years? Are there going to be any on the lots? Are there going to be any for sale? freaks me out right i'm just I'm, I'm just like you guys here i'm on the other end of this camera but i'm seeing all these shortages and you know i can do my part to make sure that things keep moving that i'll keep trucking that we'll keep hauling stuff keep bringing stuff out there but eventually hopefully this world will uh land on its feet and we can get back to life as normal because i do realize that living in uh different times right you got to remember that uh, the world keeps changing. The world today in 2021 is way different than the world in 1921, which is way different than the world in 1821. We keep moving forward. The world keeps changing. We got to keep up with it, and it's changing fast. Let's try not to be too scared, too fearful of the future, and let's try to be more optimistic. That's all I got to say right now. I'm just blabbering here. I'm sorry. Thank you for watching all the way to the end of my vlog. I, I really do appreciate that. If you guys give me a thumbs up, it does help me a lot. Appreciate that. If you haven't subscribed yet already, a lot of you watch and you haven't subscribed, I encourage you to uh, please hit that subscribe button. It's free and uh, helps me out. If you guys want to know more about me, down below in the description of my videos, all of my, uh, all of my info is down there. You can follow me wherever you like, and I will talk to you tomorrow. Take care.